This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Say hello to our friends jumping on now listening in Boston at WAAF, Boston's rock station. Also Boston, uh, Bayou 95.7 in New Orleans and our friends at Rock 103 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hello, Fort Bragg. Big show for you today. Random question, question. Your guess is as good as mine. The categories today coming up, cereal and ice cream. And what you don't need to know, the hot car edition. In the meantime, car. is our random question, question 844 Random. Hello, random, Dave. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Random, random, random. Hello there. Hola. Hola. Hola, Dave. How you doing, man? We're doing great. How are you, man? I'm enjoying this wonderful day off. Okay. Good All for right. you, man. All right. Here you go, Dave. Oh. What, uh, what happened to your pet? What happened to my pet? Yep. Um, I would say this. Uh, Uh-oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> I've, I've always had huskies. As my dogs for the past, you know, 25 years. Um, the last dog I had was a Husky Malamute mix. So he's half Husky. Half Husky. <laughs> no, you don't understand. The dog I had was named Ritalin. His name was Ritalin? Ritalin? Based- you didn't know yeah. know about being a Husky. You named him all right. Hang on, hang on. Once again, bedroom <laughs> colors, here are the seven words you can't say on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker, mother, <laughs> and <laughs> please keep those well, words in mind like, when calling. Some unusual hey, description for a pet. Right. Right. There's, a, there's, a, there's a reason that, you know, I mean, the, the herd thins. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. It doesn't matter if it's human. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a dog. Like, you're going to have smart ones. You're going to have ones that probably just, you know, have and a hard time. Some dogs are really nice. Yeah. It's not that smart. Right. Yeah, but as humans, we keep our, our loose ends around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. any anywhere yeah. else in the animal kingdom, the herd thins here. Like we protect them and yeah. get collectively dumber. So your dog is a dip s. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, but he had a half sister. Uh, she was half husky too. Think about that. She was half husky and half Malamute, and most beautiful dog I ever had. And we lost her about a year and a half ago, after about twelve years. But she. She would bring me animals that were on the property. We had the invisible fence, so she had two acres to roam. And she would, you know, I mean, granted, bringing back possum, big deal. You know, it's a possum. that they got. That's a 13-nippled, ugly weasel. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, no big deal. But I ended up with, on the back of my porch, or the, the patio on the sliding glass door from our master bedroom, she would bring me, like, crow. I'm going, how the hell did you catch crow? You know? And then uh, I guess the biggest thing was uh, one time we woke up at 3 in the morning with uh, her and Ritalin uh, below the deck of our, our deck off our master bedroom. They had cornered a, like, 45-pound raccoon, and they were just, Getting their ass kicked. I mean, they didn't understand that a raccoon is going to beat your ass. Right. So I had to get them in the house. I finally got them in the house, and um, you know, the, the raccoon eventually went away. We got medical treatment for them and all that stuff. And then about a, a week later, she caught a possum, but she brought it to the back porch and this thing was a skull and a spine she Ah. opened up a can of whoop ass as payback on this whole thing on this possum and it was like oh my god you think the possum Mm -hmm. made fun of your dogs when they're getting their ass kicked by the raccoon no i think maggie was waiting for the opportunity to just vent out all the emotion she had yeah you say from was, this raccoon beating, the dog had spent a week just pent up aggression, and this possum happened to be the victim. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Uh, but she was <laughs> no, she was a beautiful dog, and then what I understand, which 
later on, we did some research on Malamutes. We found out that they were raised to be babysitters of the Inuit tribes up north in Alaska. And she was that way. She was just, to humans, she was... <laughs> <laughs> she was the most loving dog I've ever had. Hmm. But if you were an animal coming on our property, <laughs> she was going to cap that's your sad. ass. All right. That's, that's, okay. that's good to know. I guess I can live yeah. with that. I mean, yeah. When my dog was alive, there's a one possum that lives in my yard, and I don't care because it only comes out at night. But I would take the dog out so she could drop a deuce or whatever. And the possum and my dog, like they were friends. And they would sit Side by side, right? And it wouldn't do anything. They just kind of sat there with each other. But if I walked toward my dog, which is next to the possum, this possum would hiss at me, right? Doing what possums do. But my dog had no reaction. I'm like, hey, man, you know, you might be buddies with the possum, but that bitch does not feed you. He does not take you out. He does not offer you water. He does not rub your belly. Like, what the hell? The last Hmm. dog I sat, he was good with other humans, but it would mess with other dogs. Really? Which kind of sucks, because you can't take it to a dog park. And get all the chicks that are like, is that your yeah. dog? And you lie and say, yeah, it's my dog. Can we play with your dog? Is it friendly? Just don't bring your dog around. Right. <laughs> uh, the reason we asked what happened to your pet, after three years of wondering if their family dog, Ginger, was alive, a family from Wyoming got the answer on Wednesday. It all began in August of 2015 in Burlington, Iowa. In a hotel room in Sioux Falls, nearly seven hours from away from Burlington, is where they found Candy Glick, her boyfriend Grant, and a dog Glick that was rescued. Glick? Glick. We started getting a lot of calls saying there was a Jimmy. dog running loose in town. Uh, people said they saw a deceased dog, so I'd go to the spot where they say it was, and it wouldn't be there. Glick now uh, runs the Des Moines County Regional Humane Society, and she couldn't find any of these dogs, the deceased dog or not, because the dog was alive and well. I actually made a phone call to my husband and said, hey, Were you in Burlington, Iowa about three years ago? This is going to be the weirdest phone call you've ever gotten in your life. Uh, Basically, this guy was on a business trip in Burlington, and he and his wife didn't want to leave the dog at the kennel, so they brought uh, her along, and she escaped from the home the family was renting at the time. Literally 15 minutes we were there in the neighborhood, and we never saw the dog again. Well, the dog showed up. Three years later, they set Damn. a trap with hot dogs, captured the dog on Saturday, <laughs> who had been running through the... Na- it had been seen. It had never been caught. For three years. For three years, they found their dog. They were skeptical, though, when they got the call, because they were like, yeah, there's no way that this dog is still alive. Her undercoat had grown out. She was twice as big as she is now. She had a lot of matting on her, and, of course, after three years, her face had aged, so it just didn't look like the same dog. But after a trip to the groomer, it revealed what would be key. She had on, Jennifer remembered, a purple and lime green collar. I was speechless. The collar was on. The tag was on the dogs. Three Damn. years later, they found the dog. That now, is amazing. Now, the guy that who, uh, who answered the question, he's talking about his uh, husky Malamute killing everything. What was the story? We saw it a couple of weeks ago. I want to say this woman had a husky. I think it was a husky. And, like, her dog got out of the yard. and was oh, only. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, by the time this dog returned, and it wasn't like three, it was like later that day. This thing basically had mauled everything in the neighborhood. Because the, the this, neighbors like, had like a had petting chickens. farm. Had th- and oh, like the yeah, you remember had that? A petting farm. Right. So it went over there and it killed a bunch of ducks, killed something else, and then you ate another name it, chickens. man. Yeah. I mean, this oh, yeah. dog, and like, like I said, the dog was not gone long. Like It runs out of the house, and by the time it comes back, it has decimated everything else in the neighborhood. I did not know that about huskies. Uh, I am that's why you feel you. bad for the lady, because she's like, Look, I didn't know it would go on a killing spree. Like, <laughs> right. it, it's been a normal dog. It just yeah, and that's the like they're still dogs. <laughs> yeah, right. Like sometimes they eat chicken. What did you say, Miles? Random, 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 he had two random, like bloodhound. I don't know what was it like. Random, he had two dogs oh, and are watching another dog and there's yeah. a goat. I mean, it, it's terrible. How did, what was it like? He he was uh, so. My buddy Jay, I'll throw him under the bus. He uh, he had two Boston Terriers. <laughs> right, and, right, right. He was for getting, the record, I don't know that he loves that you tell this story. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he does it. <laughs> Actually, in fact, I know he doesn't. <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> so we go, uh, he has to drop his dog off at his sister's place. Right, his right. His sister's going, uh, he's going out of town someplace or whatever. And his sister has a bloodhound. And this is a big, I don't know if it's a bloodhound. What, I mean, this thing is big. And right. when this thing barks, man, it's like, oh. <laughs> you're right. like, God, man, it's like a hound hound, right? Sister goes to work, comes home. It looks like a mass murder scene. There's blood on the gates. There's blood all over the door. Uh, in the it should be also noted that uh, his sister was was planning on moving. I don't know if she's moved or not at this point in time. But she, her husband, uh, got a job. They're planning on moving. And one of the things that they couldn't figure out was what are they going to do with their pet goat? 
So they had a pet goat. That's a reasonable question. But I'm not sure that they knew someone who was willing to take the goat or they had a place for the goat to go, but she was working on it's it. It's not like giving away a cat. Right, but that was one of the things. It was kind of still kind of a question mark was, how am I going to get rid of this this goat? You know, Because um, <laughs> where they were moving was not goat friendly. <laughs> So, because they're kind of out, you know, out, out, they, have, they, have, they, have, they have property yeah. and they have room to, you know, have a go, whatever. So, uh, so she comes home and the gate's wide open. There's blood everywhere. And there are three dogs with blood all over their faces and they have slaughtered that goat. Well, it's, the, been, the, it's been the day just absolutely demolishing that goat. On the bright side, he did not have to worry about what to do with the goat. No, no, the, the, dogs goat, the, goat, the goat was gone. Uh, by the way, as far as dogs go, and I said, my dog. Oh, Jesus. Had made friends with a possum. This guy says, my dog made friend with a squirrel. Huh. Squirrel. Squir- I feel like squirrels, I don't know, man. Like, a dog would be a lion, a squirrel would be an antelope, right? Like, I've never seen a dog that can look at a squirrel and not lose its mind. A squirrel. I don't know if they look like running snacks or, remember like when Sylvester would look at Tweety, and then in his mind it looked like a, a cooked Cornish hen swinging back and forth in the cage. Yeah. I feel like when a dog looks at a squirrel, it looks like a cooked, prepared meal. But friends with a squirrel, that would just annoy the hell out of me. Yeah, that ain't right. Like, come on, man. Hey, you're it. a dog. You got to chase that thing. It's a, it's here for you to chase. That's why squirrels were put on Earth. Yeah, like for well, squirrels can lose their mind, too, man. Oh, they, man. When no, they get mad. Oh, yeah. They, uh, I've, I, the, there's been like, <laughs> I've seen signs posted just places like, beware of the squirrel. It attacks people who walk by here. And I'm just like, like come on. What? Really? There's an attacking squirrel? Like, I got to see this. Like, it kind of makes you want to walk by more just to see if it'll come out and attack you. I mean, the idea of a squirrel biting you does not sound nice. Right. I just feel like yeah. I sh- there should be some way to stop it. It's a squirrel. I mean, right. I mean, listen, though. But but one thing, I feel like in, in nature, you know, an- generally it goes by size. And animals will fight to the death and all that. But, like, if I see a spider, there's no chance the spider can take me, right? It's just it's not going to happen. If I no. step on it, it's over. But still, when I see it, we're at an impasse. And then the worst part is, like, the spider knows, right? Because when you get close to the spider, they get in that weird defensive, like, Bruce Lee stance. Squirrels come for your face. Well, sure, yeah, man. That's their, that's it's also their just not a great look to be outside stomping on squirrels. <laughs> yeah, squirrel ain't going to, like, go for your <laughs> Even foot. Even if you're in the your right, <laughs> you look bad. <laughs> Somebody comes by, like, is that guy stomping out a squirrel? <laughs> Hold the line. More of the random question. Question coming up. 844-999-OLA. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Your guess is as good as mine. The categories today will be cereal and ice cream. We'll do your guess is as good as mine right after emails from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. In the random, meantime, random, it is random, our random question random, question. Random, Hello, random, Katie. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Random, 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 uh, random, hola. Random, hola. Random, random, Hello, Katie. Random. How are you guys? We're great. How are you doing? Good. Okay. Katie, let's find you a good question here. Ha. Ah, okay. Katie, let's go this one. When uh, when would you say that you knew the relationship was over? What was it? Maybe it was long before oh. the relationship was over, but you thought, oh, boy, that's I'm going to let that slide, but I'll never forget it, you know? Um, well, it wasn't going very well for a while, but when I knew it was over, it was when, um, well, he had the motorcycle, so I, I signed up for motorcycle class. I bought a motorcycle. He knew I was going to. You know, working to go riding with him, and um, that, that was pretty cool. But uh, I went on a motorcycle ride with a friend from middle school, and then he called me a slut, and then he can't trust me anymore. So I we broke up. Because <laughs> you went on a oh, motorcycle ride. You know what, Katie? I did not know <laughs> yeah. about this uh, motorcycling with another. I don't think I've ever. Scooped, I don't. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever heard of this? And and no one ever does. Scoot, so. scoot, you got to dump them. Yeah, the scooter life somebody. Else. Oh yeah, I wouldn't right tolerate that. <laughs> You All can't right. have friends that have similar interests. Yeah. Well, what kind of motorcycle? That's the right? worst kind of friend to have is someone who shares similar interests as you. How weird. <laughs> right? What? Uh, so what kind of motorcycle did you get? I got a um, 2000 Kawasaki Super Sherpa. It's really, really fun. What's uh, What's the longest ride you've taken? Well, I actually just got it last week, and I got my endorsement last Friday. So oh, nice. I guess, yeah, I just kind of... Rode around Port Orchard, and I, 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 I maxed out at 84 miles an hour. It's so crazy. Yeah, the, hey, the can guy, I get, can right. I say something to you guys? What's that? Um, a couple weeks ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think Ryan Castle um, introduced the, um, um, it was a mashup of Coldplay and System of Down. Yes. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it was very cool. That. I just wanted to say thank you for, for uh, introducing that, like, guys. Uh, well, don't call him and thank him, because it'll just don't make Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Just make the dude's okay. ego yeah, is already, already really annoying to work with. We have to, we have double doors in here just to get him in the But I will say this, I will say this, Katie, that was an excellently cool effing mashup. That was one of the better yeah. ones, yeah, for sure. The reason we asked, when did you know the uh, the relationship was over? 
Uh, the police in Brookfield, Wisconsin, got a call a few weeks ago from a movie theater about a potential domestic situation between a husband and a wife. <laughs> Apparently, they ordered popcorn, mm-hmm. and the wife secretly put salt on it. Oh, no. And the husband hated extra salt. So when he figured out what his wife had done, he announced their marriage was over. It's over. He also He's used at it. the movie theater, and mm-hmm. he announces the marriage yep. is over because of salt. He also used it as a metaphor for doing things behind his back, like possibly having an affair. Oh. He was so mad that he yes, wanted to leave the theater. That's what that means. But she took his keys to keep him from driving away angry, and that's when someone called the cops. Fortunately, things never got physical. No one was arrested. There's no word on whether they went through with the divorce or if they managed to bounce back from the salt incident, but yes. I would say that, and I don't know much about the situation. I do not believe that someone adding salt to popcorn is an indication of infidelity, as salt and popcorn typically go hand in hand. Yeah, and yeah. I understand he might not like it, but I feel like maybe after he made the proclamation, if she really absorbs everything that went down and his reasoning behind it and how he connects the dots, she should probably agree to that divorce. Yeah, well, or Nothing. this is just like the final thing. Yeah, could be. It like might they be. Obviously, already had a cover. You can't be like, you put salt on there, you're a cheater. You too. got any particular <laughs> things about your popcorn? Anything crazy? Popcorn? No, I man. Just don't... You want to know a pro tip? I don't go to the movies enough, to, honestly, to have any theory on popcorn. Here's my pro tip. The All more right. they got, just put it on there. When you get to, when you get to popcorn, you go, hey. You say you'll put it in a straw? No, you go, hey, kid, uh, do me a favor. Put one scoop in there, and then put the butter in. And then put another scoop in there. And then put the butter on top. How's that a pro tip? They do that for you. No, they don't. They'll leave an ass. No, no, they don't. They don't. They not, ask half, you. not halfway. They, they always ask, hey, do you want a butter, right? And yeah. I say, what, if that's what you want to call the substance, sure, but I would like that greasy substance on there. Mm-hmm. And they always ask because they'll throw the first thing in. And then they look at you like, hey, do you want oh, me to really? butter? Oh, that's decent. Absolutely, I've never had that. No, I was going to ask for it. I Maybe feel like you I'm don't being, have the uh, right look. I feel like I'm being needy. But Maybe like, they look you know, at you and they're care. like, I'm not giving him extra butter. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't need it. Friend 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 fat ass. I'm not offering you any. Dude, there's a secret to fries, too. If you go to McDonald's, they'll salt them for them. Well, you don't have to say anything. Just don't say anything. Yeah, McDonald's can put on the salt. Ted, the secret to McDonald's is to ask for fries without salt so they'll be fresh and then you add the salt. See, that's too much work, man. Trust me, man. I'm telling you, that's that, that's. A Do you need there. fresh fries? They'll, no, they'll cook them right there. Because normally all their fries, but are they're salted. still hot. You just gotta wait a little bit. But they're already hot. Yeah, but they, I mean, they're under heat. What are talking about? Like fresh. Like they're just yours. But they know how to salt their French fries. They do. Are you turning into fast food foodie? Yes. Gotta food. have it the freshest it is. Right. Like, dude, it's McDonald's. The fries right. are always yeah, hot. Exactly. Right. Uh, the fast food. Gotta have a good de- a bacon double cheeseburger. That there. should be like your cooking show. Mm-hmm. Not cooking show, but like you're traveling around. The fast foodie. That's right. No matter where you go. Hey, We're man. in a Carl's Jr. in Wichita, <laughs> Kansas. I'm standing outside talking to the manager, Ronnie. Guess what the manager special. Believe now they'll give you two patties. Uh, Hello, Cody. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. Cody, let's go to this random question. Question, what do you wish that you would have never been in contact with? Could be a person, could be a, a disease, substance. yeah, could be all, could be a food product, could be anything. What do you wish that you uh, would have never been in contact with? Never been in contact with. Uh, <clears throat> hmm, that's, that's kind of a weird one because I kind of like, not, not really play it safe my whole life, but I kind of really, you know, but you never brushed up against a cactus, mm. ran through thorns, touched poison ivy, got herpes. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be like. Uh, so yeah, we were walking. I lived in this neighborhood, and we were walking between my yard and my neighbor's yard. There was like bushes and stuff. We were walking around this log, and um, I fell, and so like I fell, so my right arm and leg like went into the bushes while still standing on top of the log, and I pulled my arm back out to realize that. The bushes completely underneath me were all poison ivy. <laughs> yeah, man, that's so, that, that, you're right. I've, I've yeah. been into a, I've been into a batch of poison that oak. Pretty bad. Poison oak was the worst thing that I've ever had. So what, I know poison oak. Well, I know poison sumac apparently is the worst of the three poisons, yeah, right? But yeah. poison. So poison I, ivy is what it is. Itchy, you get some hives. It but, was it was the worst. We were probably. 12, 13 years old. It's about the right age. We were down at a lake. Poison ivy yeah. kind of hides, hides, like hangs like a vine. Yeah. Yeah. So we were swinging. With oh, shirt. no. So, man, I mean, you, the, your chest, your You guys arms, didn't realize it. No, in between your legs, down by your <sighs> groin. Anywhere where you would go out like on a rope swing, <laughs> all of us, there was four or five of us, and we were, I mean, Dang, it, was, man. Yeah, it was not Jesus just. Jesus Christ. And then we all realized what happened. How know? long were you guys swinging on this thing? All day. I mean, all day. You <laughs> That's all right. When I was a landscaper... 
I was probably like only 30 seconds into using a weed whacker on some ivy. Yeah. And then my buddy came around the corner. It's like, stop, stop, stop. Like, what? And he's like, you are whack, weed whacking poison ivy. Uh, so same thing. The juice got all over oh, my arms and stuff. Oh, so the next see. few days were rough. What uh, Science Alert calls a giant horror plant has made its way to yet another U.S. state. And people who come in contact with it could feel the pain. Virginia Tech's Massey uh, Herbarium. Herbarium? Herburb. Uh, herburb, 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 herburb. Herbarium. Uh, tweeted last week it had ID'd a giant hogweed plant in Clark County. Later updating that uh, that count on Facebook to 30 plants, the plant holds what Fox News deems a toxic sap, which prevents human skin from protecting itself from the sun's rays, leading to severe burns that can be worsened by sweat. Thank you, plant. New York State's Department of Environmental Conservation lists other hazards that can result from coming in contact with the plant, as well as some photos of terrible burns on the body, uh, long-term sunlight sensitivity, oozing pussy blisters. Mm-hmm. Pussy. Mm-hmm. Scarring. Oozy. See how they spell pussy? One S. Oozy. <laughs> and even permanent blindness. <laughs> right changes that. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. How about pussy. that? There it is. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot to fall prey to the poison of the giant hogweed, oh, which yeah. resembles an umbrella or mushroom made up of white flowers. A simple brush up against its bristles can spur a reaction in as soon as 15 minutes with... Sensitivity peak between 30 minutes and two hours after uh, contact. It's difficult to stop the spreading of the invasive plant, which is native to the region of uh, Caucasus in Russia. Introduced what? to the U.S. sometime in the early 20th century, Virginia environmental officials are warning the plant may have been spotted in other parts of the state and for people who come across it to let their bare skin not to make contact. It awful, uh, also offers a, a guide for uh, very carefully getting rid of the plant, if you want to try that. But, yeah, it's been uh, found in at least a dozen other states. Good God, man. Yeah, that's crazy. The giant hoarder plant. How come there's nothing world? ever awesome that's invasive? Like, no one ever, man, it's invasive, and this plant poops chocolate. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's all, you know, it, it's all, <laughs> yeah. if it's a fish, it kills every other fish. If it's a plant, it sucks. Like, why can't there be one just decent invasive thing where you're like, you know what, I'm glad you're here now? Well, because then it's not invasive, right? But it's still be uh, to me invasive would just be right. You are not. This is not your natural habitat, and you're taking over. I, you're correct, but it has a I negative connotation, a negative, yeah. right? Because they only say invasive when we don't like it. It's yeah. only invasive but, when it takes over, and the original population is there. So not, but if you like it's natural it, selection, but right. it's not. Because, but you still, it's still invasive. But we only say invasive if we don't like it. I mean, that's why if you go to a place and you're coming back in, they go. Were you on a farm in Ecuador? Right. Like, uh, no, man. Did you pet a goat in uh, Colombia? <laughs> Do you no, have any man, right. Right. There's a reason for but that. But like cherry trees, we don't call them invasive, but they're not from here. They're invasive. Palm right. trees. They're not from here, but they're invasive. Avocados, all that stuff. Uh, by the way, my, and I'm assuming this comes from former McDonald's employees. All right. yeah, now, no, you were saying no. one of your McDonald's hacks, as it were, if you want... Fresh fries. Fresh fries. Yeah. No Ask for them without salt. Mm-hmm. Get them fresh. All right. So th- these are the comments they that They lick the salt off and just put them in there. So, yes, they suck the salt <laughs> off of each fry and place it in your bag. <laughs> they do not say that. It says, uh, the McDonald's hack is false. You can just ask for fresh fries. God damn it. You can just ask for fresh fries. Of course fries. you can. Wait, and then you don't have to deal with the um, sad, unsalted potatoes, etc. Actually, Miles, there's a better way to do the French fry trick. Okay. When you order your food, just ask for your fries to be well done. They'll come out right. nice and crispy. Uh, you be definitely super should fr- do that at in and out Burger. Without being burnt. And then they also add, if you decide, uh, bamboo, by the way, another invasive species. If you. Oh, my God. Blackberries as well. If you. The cabbage comes. You can't get rid of bamboo. If you ask for. If you ask for unsalted fries, basically, they just throw the fries they already have back in the fryer anyway. Oh, cool. So it'll still be hot. They're just trying to burn off the salt. And what do we call that? That's par. Anyway, so that's probably the natural. No, it's not. It's not what it is. No. Remember, par cooking is you got to... You're halfway. Home. Halfway. So par cooking all would right, be... Right. right. A like, version of that. It's just a no, quick splash. No, you're double cooking This is them. right. You're just uh, burning you are right. Par cooking is halfway to being cooked. So they've been, cooked. they're fully cooked. And now they're being cooked. You're this just is, getting them recooked. This is like, micro- stuff like, this is like it's mic- McDonald's. This is like, like microwave for pizza. fries are always, like, different over one thing. It's those French fries. Yes, random, 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 random. Why are you gotta make it difficult? Random, I don't know. Random, Leave them alone. Random, random, the one thing they know they got are fries. Random, You're still gonna find a way to F it up. Right. Mm, too much salt. Yeah, right. Hello, Jacob. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. All right, Jacob, welcome to the program, the random question question. Let's go with this one. What did uh, what did you lose or what did you find? What did you lose or what did you find? 
Let's see. Okay, I used to live in Columbus, Georgia, and uh, a new video game was coming out on the PlayStation 4, but I had an Xbox. So I uh, went on Craigslist, and I was looking for people that were willing to uh, trade for my Xbox. You know, give me their PlayStation, and I'll take their Xbox. Now, I, mind you, I had about $200 worth of games or accessories for the darn thing. And, so what's uh, that, like three games? That's what I was going to say. That's not a lot. <laughs> They're forty bucks well, a piece. I, well, uh, just just in games and accessories, it was like two hundred bucks. Okay. Um, so I find this guy who had a PlayStation, and uh, we we sent each other videos of the consoles working and whatnot, just so that we knew we weren't, you know, trying to mess with each other. Um, we meet at a grocery store parking lot, and uh, I put all of my stuff back into its original boxes. I even wiped down the Xbox and uh, cleaned up the controllers, which one of them I uh, did a custom paint job myself. You did a um, custom paint job on it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took the controller, pulled it apart, sanded down the uh, the, the grips, and uh, painted it white and threw blood splatters on it. Well, red red paint, but That's made it look like blood mm-hmm. splatters on just, a white background. Just so you could get yeah. light. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um. So, yeah, so I meet the guy at this grocery store parking lot, and uh, I pop open the trunk and hand him the Xbox um, and all the games. And, again, they were in its original uh, boxes. And he hands me a trash bag with the PlayStation inside of the trash bag with a couple of wires, uh, one game, and a broken controller. And I still took it. (laughs) Well, could you um, could you fix any of that stuff? Was it supposed to be an even trade? Yeah, I was, thought it would have been an even trade. Just you know, I was hoping that he would have had a moral compass or something. But I don't know. I was desperate to take it because yeah, I was. When you, you ever know, you end up in a grocery store parking lot trading stuff with a dude who you met on Craigslist, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just, I mean, look, even if the moral compass is there, you're right. Just. Maybe I'm a cynic, but I just feel like I'm pulling up in my car mm-hmm. in a parking lot to trade something with someone. There's there's no way I should expect this to be excellent. The reason we asked, what did you uh, lose or what did you find? A Pennsylvania woman who lost her $20,000 engagement ring at the beach just one week before her wedding day has been oh. reunited with her diamond band thanks to a very resourceful officer. Twenty thousand dollar engagement ring. How, How pissed is that dude? Like, I you know, lost what... I, how twenty? How much is that wedding going to cost? If the yeah, ring is, I'm guessing one hundred, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where well, was this at? Jersey. This was in. Uh, do you know? Have you ever heard of Fire Island Beach? I oh know. yeah. Is Where's that off of Long Island? Island? Maybe. <clears throat> I thought Fire Island was off of California. No, it's off of New York City. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I thought. Is it like it's the Long famous, Island? Like, gay Island? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Believe right. it or not, and I'm you not. Know, I'm not know, making this up. The only reason I have any idea about this, and this is not a joke. The band of village people back in the day, they had a song called Fire Island. And that, that was a big thing right. but for some reason. But they also had an al- a song called San Francisco on the same album, so I assumed it was just all the The only reason I know Fire Island is New York is because there's a uh, great cinematic movie called Weekend at Bernie's. Oh, oh, oh. A cinematic the tour de force. It's Island. the two dudes on the, de- on the roof of their place going, we go to Fire Island, Fire Island, or we go swim in the needles at some other beach. So you realize <laughs> the reason we're even vaguely familiar is either the village people or Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. That's how we get information. So the woman was celebrating her bachelorette party at uh, the Fire Island beach there when she misplaced a ring in the midst of the festivities so desperate for help she notified the uh, the police there in Suffolk county and when the marine bureau police officer showed up robert washington he couldn't locate the ring but uh he had a guy he knew another long island officer known as uh, edmund mcdowell and he called the guy why because he knew edmund and he knew that edmund owned a metal detector Mm -hmm. and the officer then combed the beach with his handy tool on sunday near where everyone was having their little festivities there. He found it in 15 minutes in Damn. one foot of sand. When he found the diamond ring, he said everyone on the beach cheered. We called her up, and she was crying and crying. A friend of the soon-to-be bride who stayed at the Fire Island to help with the search delivered the ring on Sunday night. Uh, this is not the first time, by the way, that McDowell has struck gold with his metal detector. The officer used it eight years ago to help a man find his $30,000 platinum and diamond wedding ring that he lost while playing volleyball in the sand. Why would you wear that to the beach if you know the dollar amount? I mean, there, how many other things that are worth that much in your life, which is maybe your car, 
And that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Why would you take that to the beach? I don't and know. I would think you're just so used to wearing it. I Yeah, I guess. Not man. nearly that expensive, but my class ring, when I was like 18 or 19, I did door-to-door sales. Me and the guy were joking around throwing snowballs. And I, oh, no. The ring flew off, so I lost it, right? And we searched, couldn't find it. And then there was a uh, like a city guy there doing something with pipes, and he had a metal detector, and that's oh, yeah? how we found it in the snow. Metal detectors? Yeah. I'm intrigued by those, man. I have always thought You're going to gonna be one of those guys. I know. Just I'm like, it. one day, one day Just I bet I own a metal detector. And your bucket hat. My bucket hat. I'm going to be up. And you know what time I got up? Dogs morning? playing poker. Just finish <laughs> the outfit already. <laughs> right, exactly. And you know what? Let's go. I got out of there at 4 a.m. too. Like, I woke up, you know, like at 4 a.m. Like, I'm up. Time to eat breakfast. You know what I mean? Like, that's when you break out the metal yeah, detector. Exactly. Like, am I really going to be that guy? Random yes. question, question, 844 More your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitch, hola. You have entered the men's room. Coming up, we'll drink it. Tell us with a shot of the day. What you don't need to know. The hot car edition is also coming up. But first, the random question. Question eight four four nine nine nine. Hola. Random, random. Hello, random, Franklin. Random, Welcome random, to the random, men's room. Random, 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 random. random Hello, random, Franklin. Random, 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 mm-hmm. random, Franklin. Is our opportunity to talk to one of the uh, pioneering black men, one of the first mm-hmm. black characters and to peanuts. show up on the peanuts. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh. Hello, Sean. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, guys. Hola. Oh, What's Sean. Up? Welcome to the program. Let's see here. Let's go this one. What, uh, Sean, what about uh, a girlfriend, significant other, boyfriend, uh, do you roll your eyes about? What do they do that just makes you go, oh, God, here we go again? Uh, oh. Can it be uh, an actual girlfriend? Yeah, whatever. Somebody yeah, that like, you've been uh, close with. When I was in high school, uh, I was dating a girl, and then uh, I found out she was still dating a guy from the football team on the U.S. Yeah, I grew up in high school. And uh, she was like a, a jock jock, like, you know, home, sleep back here. He uh, drove his dad's muscle car and stuff like that. And uh, he, uh, he stalked, like, those, um, what do you call it, the chance or whatever, and, like, Bill Pierce. I ended up, uh, he... Uh, I played for our football team, and uh, I found out about him. And around the same time, he found out about me, and uh, he tried to knock me down pretty good. He got a bunch of buddy. Uh, he tried to jump me off the field, and uh, I don't know. It was kind of good. You know, it made me roll my eyes. Yeah, okay. I caught about 20% of that. No. <laughs> I really was having a difficult time there. I don't know if it was just you, me. He was dating a girl. She was on the same, or she still had a boyfriend. Okay. Playing for the other football team. Oh. oh. Or something, right. He played for his football team. The guy tried to knock him down with some other dudes. Didn't work. Rolled his eyes. I roll. You guys got any uh, eye rolling moments? Yeah. the kid. Well, not the kid's daughter. Right. She doesn't do it so much now. It's like, look, there's a few things, and I'm pretty lenient about most things. You can roll your eyes at me, all right? You can even curse my name, but you can't do it. In my line of sight. And I'm trying to get her to understand, like, listen, man, like, when you saunter off and you want to say that I'm some kind of a-hole or whatever it is, because I get it, you're a kid and I can be a D, right? But you can't do it with me hearing you and you don't roll your eyes with me. Seeing you. So what you do is, when I'm standing behind you telling you what it is you failed to do that I've asked you to do 15 times, I know you're going to roll your eyes, but roll your eyes then. But then when you turn around and say, okay, just act like it's all cool. That's all. But it's like, hey, man. You just rolled your eyes in front of me. I can't explain why it pisses me off, but understand. So don't do that, and don't slam your door. Do you have any uh, eye-rolling moves that you uh, use around your significant other? No, I'm not eye-rolling. I'm not eye-rolling. No, I'm, I'm, eye eye uh, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm just to get the eye-roll. I have oh, a lot of things that, I, like, want the I eye think roll. I, I want to eye-roll, but I'm with you. I just don't know that I do it. You know, like, uh, and if I do, I have no idea. And I realize that oh, my daughter doesn't do right know now. she yeah, does it, and that's the problem. So you're like, I know you don't know you're doing it, but understand, it pisses me off. So try to be aware that you're doing it. So okay. Children seem better at it. You're at a restaurant, right? Oh, yeah, because they mean it. You, yeah. eat, you eat everything on your plate. Mm-hmm. And then when the waiter or the waitress comes, you go, it's terrible. And I can look over and everybody's just, oh, God. Right. <laughs> now I just go, <laughs> oh, everyone, they're I like, don't care. we hate that. Joke. <laughs> I know. That's the eye roll right there. <laughs> Reason we ask, what about your significant, uh, significant other uh, do you roll your eyes about? Uh, a North Carolina man won't be rolling his eyes at his wife for uh, wanting a lottery ticket. As Darren Nunnery of Linden headed to the store Monday night, his wife called out, Give me a lucky for life ticket, according to a North Carolina education lottery news release. Nunnery rolled his eyes as usual when his wife wants to play the lottery, but he did come home with a $2 ticket for that night's drawing. 
Nunnery then got a call from his wife Tuesday morning, and you see, she said, uh, Do you feel lucky? He asked what she meant. She informed him that they'd won the lucky for life, $25,000 a year. As the family claimed their prize on Tuesday, Nunnery told his wife, The rolling my eyes is over. And they did say that the good luck is a blessing, uh, pales uh, to the blessing uh, he'd had over the last four years as he recovered from a uh, a brain aneurysm. But Jeez. some of that money will help pay for those bills. The former maintenance contractor at Fort Bragg remains disabled, but he says uh, doctors tell him he's just lucky to be alive. I get to see my grandchildren, my wife, my kids. Uh, Nunnery said some things needed to be done with her home and his family, so they took the lump sum of... $390,000. Would you take the $390,000? I guess it depends on how old you are, where you are. Yeah, the stage it depends the on age, right? Uh, what was the other option? 25 grand a year. Because it just supplements your income, right? You're not yeah. going to live on 25. I mean, at this but... point, I'd probably take 25 grand a year. Okay, hold on. Sure. After federal and state withholding, he took home $274,000. I'll do the 25 a year. He says he plans to pay off the mortgage, do some home improvement projects, take care of some bills. And he plans to give some money to loved ones and to his uh, church. Well, it there depends, though, too. If you just take that lump sum like that, like, you go buy a house. You got it. I mean, you can pay yeah, put a down something. payment on a house. Yes. Yeah. Random question, question 844 Hold up. Random, random. Hello, Adam. Random, Welcome random, to the men's random, room. Random, 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 random. Hello, Adam. Random, random, Hola, bicholas. Hola. Hola. Oh, Adam, we're good. How are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Just got off work. Just got done smoking a dupe. <laughs> <Good. All right. laughs> Let's go with this one here, man. Have you uh, have you ever got into it with a family member? Brother, sister? Oh, man. Cousin? Um, so I come from a family. I'm the third oldest of eight siblings. Damn. So me See, and my I, oh, wait, hold on. Brother, I, bet, I bet you eat real fast, don't you? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, it's a, I, anybody that I know, man, has like more than four uh, brothers and sisters. They eat so fast. Yeah, you have to. Got to fight for that food. If you don't eat fast enough, you don't get second. That's it. But yeah, um, definitely. My oldest brother, um, I'm 23. He's 27. Me and him have gotten into many altercations. Uh, I remember this one time I was 16. Um, I don't even remember what the fight was about. I guess he thought I stole something from him. But anyway, I'm just sitting there enjoying my dinner, and this guy comes out of nowhere with a plate and just smashes it over my head. Damn! How old were you at the yeah. time? I was 16. All right. Brother with and a plate to the head, huh? Yeah. Not not like any old plastic flimsy plate. It was a stoneware plate. Dude. Oh, man. Get it. Yeah. Did he knock you out? Oh, no. I got up, and I knocked him down because I'm actually bigger than him, even though he's older than me. That's why he had the plate. But, uh... <laughs> I turned around and knocked him one, knocked him down, and then my dad jumped on both of us and Good kind time. of pulled us apart. Good times. <laughs> Never had a fight like that no, with no, my brother, no, man. No, me neither. It's a little much. Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.